Hi, welcome back. As you recall from the past video, we are building a multi-cloud business resilient infrastructure. And up to this point, we have configured Cloud Network Controller on Azure and AWS. Now, let's move on and continue configuring our infrastructure to achieve multi-cloud business continuity. Let's review where are we at. To build this architecture, we would have to follow these four easy steps. The scope of this session is step three but we're going to split this activity in two videos, Nexus dashboard installation and multi-site configuration. Now let's review the detail of the two stages. Stage one will be focused in the deployment of virtual Nexus dashboard appliance, and stage two will automate the interconnection between Azure and AWS. Now, going back to stage one, let's check the prerequisites in order to execute these four activities, which is the scope of this video. Before deploying Nexus Dashboard OBA on VMware, let's check the available resources we must have in our compute infrastructure. The requirements are per node, so remember to provision times three all the resources on the table, since the cluster for this use case requires three nodes. In this video, we are using Nexus Dashboard virtual version 2.32D, so if you prefer, you can scan the QR code and that will take you directly to the file download. Are you ready? Let's import the downloaded OVA to vCenter. Once logged in into vCenter user interface, let's deploy our OVA file we already downloaded. To execute this action, let's right click over the desired cluster and choose deploy OBF template option. In this wizard, let's select the local file radio button and select the downloaded file from the location we saved it. Once this step is done, let's click Next at the bottom of the wizard. We set a name for the VM and choose a location where the node will be deployed. In this menu, we select the compute resource where the VM will reside. Then click Next. It would take some time to validate. This is a normal process of vCenter before presenting the next view. Now we review details and click Next. In this configuration menu, we choose the profile required to later install orchestrator service in Nexus dashboard. In this case, we select the app radio button. Then we click Next. Something we have to select is the storage where the VMs will nest. Just remember, the storage must have 550 gigs per node, so we have to multiply that by 3, since that will be the total amount of machines composing the Nexus dashboard cluster. Once that is done, we click Next. Now we will map the virtual interfaces of the VM to the appropriate networks. As you can see, we have two networks. One is for management and it would have two functions allow access to users to configure the cluster and provide orchestrator service with connectivity to Cloud Network Controller. It is labeled MGMT0. The interface labeled Fabric0 is used to receive data telemetry from Nexus switches. In this case, we would not receive traffic, but we have to configure it in a separate VLAN from the one chosen to use by the management network, as you can see on the image referencing the cluster. Now we map the networks to the interfaces as desired and click Next. In this final part of the wizard, we set a password to access Nexus Dashboard UI once powered on. This management network address is going to be the one we use to connect to Nexus Dashboard Web UI. For more detail, you can review the figure on screen. We set the desired address in a sitter format with its mask. Then, on the next field, we type the gateway of the management network. We click Next to continue. Then we click Finish, and the OVA gets imported into vCenter. As you can see in the Recent task section, the OVA OVF process is getting completed. Now repeat the same steps in order to import the remaining two nodes. Now we are able to continue and power on the Nexus Dashboard virtual machine. To do it, we right click over the VM and click the first option, Power, and then Power On. 
this boots the machine and we can view it by the web console and monitor its readiness progress. This will open the VM in a new tab in the browser. Once the Nexus dashboard is ready, we get the following message on screen. Then we just have to type the IP address in a browser in an HTTPS format to continue with the configuration. We accept the certificate and proceed to login into Nexus dashboard. Since it would be the first time accessing the dashboard, Type the password configured on the vCenter app, then click on the below Begin Setup button. This presents the first time setup. We just have to fill out the wizard by starting with a name for the cluster. We add an NTP server and click on the check mark to commit. Now let's click on the Add DNS Provider link to add a server. Click on the check mark when completed to commit. Add a proxy server if required. This is used to allow internet access for the App Store to download the services to the dashboard and automate their installation. Remember to add at the beginning of the server if it's HTTP or HTTPS. Then click Next for the next view. Let's edit this node and add the data network subnet address. This is used by services like Nexus Dashboard Insights. Click on the pencil to execute the action. Data network is bound to the other interface we haven't configured yet. For more detail, you can review the image on the right. Now, we type an IP address and mask in a sitter format. After that, we add a gateway for that subnet. We can leave IPv6 configuration empty if you are not running it. Then click update button at the bottom right. It's time to add two more nodes. To do that, let's click in the Add Node link. Type the management IP you configured on vSender Wizard when you imported the OVA. Type the password you set for the VM and then click Validate. Set a name for the node. Scroll down and configure the data network as we did for the past node. Then click Add at the bottom right to finalize. Let's repeat the steps for the third node. Once in this menu, click Next in the bottom right. In this view, you can observe a summary of all the configuration done. If you're okay with it, just click Configure at the bottom right. This starts the cluster creation process. After a couple of minutes, you will be able to log into Nexus Dashboard and deploy Orchestrator service. Once Nexus Dashboard installation has concluded, it would automatically refresh to the login user interface. To access, use admin as username and the password you set up in the vCenter OVA import wizard. Then click login. Remove the first time login prompt by clicking the get started button. Close the basics configurations view. Since we will execute some prior steps, just click on the top right corner in order to close the view. The next step would be to install Orchestrator service. In the top drop-down menu, click to access the Admin Console. In the left menu, click on Services. Then on the center panel, click on App Store tab. Installing Orchestrator would be a really simple process. Just click over the Service Install button and that is it. Remember to have internet connectivity. This will start the automated installation process. On the center panel, click on the Install Services tab. This is how you can validate the deployment process has started for Orchestrator. For more details on the process, click over the Pending Tasks link. Once the installation process finalizes, you would get the Enable button. Click on it to activate Orchestrator. This will be the last step before configuring the sites. If you want to see the progress of enabling Orchestrator, click over Pending Tasks and a view will appear on the right side with a percentage and activities being completed. Once Orchestrator is enabled, you would get an open button. Click on it to navigate to the service. 
Now that everything is up and running, let's register our two sites, AWS and Azure. In order to do that, click on the Admin Console at the top bar. On the left side menu, click on Infrastructure, then Cluster Configuration to add management routes in order to have reachability from the management interface to the cloud network controllers on Azure and AWS. Scroll down to Routes and click on the pencil. The information that has to be written in Add Management Network Routes comes from the public IP address of the cloud network controllers and has to be written in a sitter format. To add the information, click the Add Management Network Routes link and type the appropriate information for both cloud network controllers. Once done, click the check mark to commit. To finalize, at the bottom, click Save. Now, to add the sites, click on the left menu over Sites link. Then, on the center view, click on the right blue button, Add Sites. Select the Cloud Network Controller radio button and set any name that makes sense in regards to your installation. The hostname or IP address should be the one used to access Cloud Network Controller. For the username, use admin and the password is the one used to access Cloud Network Controller's user interface. Click Save and that is it. You just registered the first controller. Now repeat the same procedure but for Azure. Set a name, IP address, username and password. To finalize, click Save. After a couple of minutes, you would see the connectivity status is up. This means you're ready to configure multi-site and extend policies. Pretty cool, huh? Thank you for making it all the way through. As part of this series, we would follow with step three, multi-site configuration. Stay tuned for the next video. Bye.